has a he's an interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> You must unite what has been set us up. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Can you count, suckers? I say the future! Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored, yes, anchored until further notice above Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, you're doing something wrong. You're not very good at computers. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. And if you are listening to this right now and it is not a Tuesday evening, wherever you are, then it is not a live show. So you could call in to the to the show line, but you're probably going to get voicemail. And I will listen to all those voicemails, but you're not going to have a chance to get on live unless you listen to it Tuesday nights, 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. Before I give out the show line, because we are doing a call-in show, and thank you very much to my guest Robbie Davidson from last week from Celebrate Truth Channel. He's talking about the conference. Before we, we get into the show stuff, quote of the day from the peanut gallery, the difference between the poet and the mathematician is that the poet tries to get his head into the heavens while the mathematician tries to get the heavens into his head. Who said that? G.K. Chesterton. I do not know who Chesterton is, but that's fine. Quick things, the Jeffrey Grupp challenge is still in effect. <clears throat> Anyone wants to debunk Flat Earth and thinks they've got the academic chops to do it, contact me at msergeant23 at comcast.net or you can call me at 720-897-6111 and I will try to set you up with a debate. And if you're going to do it with Jeffrey, it doesn't have to be live, but we're probably going to record it for posterity's sake. Also, the Flat Earth Big Money Challenge I think it's up to $21,000 right now. Prove the globe. Prove it. Can you prove it? Well, if you can, if you think you can, contact Zen Garcia, also on this network, at Secrets Revealed, and he will give you all the details on exactly what, what's the criteria. But I, again, that thing's just going to keep getting I Heck, I'm ponying up $1,000 of my own money for this thing. Flat Earth International Conference. I'm going to be promoting this thing until it happens. That's going to be November, first week of November, 9th and 10th in Raleigh, North Carolina. For details, go to fe2017.com. Special thank you to all the people that went to Nanaimo, Canada for the Flat Earth Social event up at the Rocking Horse Pub. That was just the 25th and I had a great time. I was up there for three, three and a half hours. Signed things, we took pictures, we took a lot, we talked about a lot of stuff, it was, ate food, drank, it was great, wonderful time. Those guys make a mean, they don't call them Bloody Marys up there in Canada. We call them Bloody Marys, they call them Caesars. Probably the finest Caesar I have had outside of my own. I make a mean Caesar. So, 
Phone number to call in tonight, because it is a call-in show, and I encourage everybody to call in, whether, whether you like Flat Earth or not. If you, if you hate Flat Earth, please do call in. 720-897-6111. That number again is 720-897-6111. Operators are standing by, and by that, I mean me. You're not going to run through a producer on the way to get me. So be nice, because no matter where you go, there you are. And if anyone was listening <laughs> during the break, apparently the uh, the show, the uh, TFR was ran into a technical issue because people could hear us during the commercial break as we were resetting the phones. So weird, right? Anyway, I'm going to read emails until the first calls come in. It's a first come, first serve thing, and I will call out your area code. And I know there's kind of a time delay. I think it's like five seconds, six seconds at least. So remember, when you're calling in, one, don't be nervous. Two, turn down your radio in the background because you don't want that feedback. That's a rookie mistake and you hate to see it. And three, just kind of be yourself. Ask whatever you want. This first email is called Air Molecules by Meow. And it's not M-E-O-W. It's M-I-A-O. And how else could I spell pronounce that? Meow. Mark, the gravity theory where everything is pulled to the center of mass, however, Air, elements, helium, oxygen, carbon dioxide, all goes against gravity. If Earth is spinning at certain miles per hour, doesn't wind create a tornado? Wow, I don't even know how to answer that because I don't think the the question was phrased correctly. What I can tell you is this. There's two, two real big problems with gravity. And, and I'm not saying – I've, I've watched a couple things now where people are saying, oh, you know, gravity doesn't exist. It's not that most flat earthers believe that gravity doesn't exist. Flat earthers can't tell you what gravity is about the same as ball earthers. And remember, we're saying ball, sphere, globe. We're not saying round because the dinner plate is round. A hub, hubcap is round. So uh, what, is, what is gravity on a ball earth? Even Neil deGrasse Tyson – I know I'm saying his name. It's OK. Don't freak out. Even Neil deGrasse Tyson will say <clears throat> on air that gravity is – scientists can only tell you what gravity does. They can't tell you what it is. They can t- tell you what the effects are. But that's about it. And for me, again, I still say it's a form of molecular magnetism, not general magnetism, molecular magnetism because that's what we do in simulations. And gravity has two real big problems when it comes to the globe. The first is the atmosphere. Combine that with and, – and, and it's the least of the two problems in my opinion because the science will say – it's an old kid's question, which is how is gravity held down to the spinning globe? And science will say, well, it's gravity. Gravity is holding down the atmosphere. It's like, well, OK. So – but doesn't gravity have a, a major bit of competition with the very, very powerful vacuum of the deadness of space? Because we all know, we've all seen the science fiction movies. And the vacuum, a vacuum is very powerful. We can, we can test vacuums down here. And the vacuum effect is extremely powerful. So how is it that the atmosphere isn't being ripped off, counteracting gravity, and, and the atmosphere just being flung you know, out into the nether regions? The second, of course, is that they also say that gravity, mainstream science says that gravity – holds the water to the globe in a very uniform fashion. And I'm, I'm not saying that the water should be the, the centrifugal force of the, of the planet spinning should create a Saturn's ring made out of water. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is there shouldn't be – if you want to say – you want to say that there shouldn't be any water at the north and south poles if it's a globe because the water should be bulging at the center. That's what the centrifugal force will do. It will pull the water – to the rate of highest spin, and that's at the center, if you believe that. And, was, and at the very least, there shouldn't the, – the oceans should be much, much thinner at the poles, and there shouldn't be really any coastline at all along the equator. I mean there should be a huge bulge of water. In fact, I would dare to say that this bulge of water should be observable from the shore, from a, from a distance or from a plane, but you don't see any of that. So that's my answer to his questions because I don't – he didn't really word it really well and it wasn't the best email in the world. But eh, we do what we can. The sex one's called Coriolis and Level Flight from a Pilot. Mark, I received this from a retired Army pilot. Thought it might be interesting to read at least portions on email night. 
My comments are in red. Okay, so it's not that bad. I think I'll read the whole thing. In response to Coriolis being real, for most practical rifle shooting, this is a non-factor. However, with long-range shooting at over a thousand yards, it does have an impact, both vertical and horizontal, depending on latitude. Military snipers use data cards for extremely long ranges, along with other factors such as bullet drift caused by the bullet spinning and wind corrections, which is mostly a guess, and temperature. All right. Uh, I, I buy some of those things. I know something about this from the artillery boys, since a howitzer can shoot over 20,000 or more meters. It could have a significant effect on accuracy. Most military azimuth readings are in mils, which means instead of 360 degrees in a circle, there are 6,400 mils, which makes for more accurate adjustments. One of the most accurate guns we have is an 8-inch howitzer. That's a big bullet. I have looked at some of the firing tables for long-range rifles, and the horizontal adjustment for 1,000 to 1,500 meters is around 1 mil or less. That's pretty small. The Norden bomb, N-O-R-D-E-N bomb, did not compute using the Coriolis effect, only wind, drift, and airspeed. But it did keep the plane steady throughout the bomb run using gyros. And the comment in red, this was on the big bombers in World War II and maybe Korea. I'm still looking for that firing table. I'll send along if I find it. My note. The letter then goes on to say, when asked about level flight and maintaining altitude without nosing down to follow the curve. Here's my answer based on procedures used in aviation today. Altitude in an aircraft is measured at barometric pressure in inches of mercury. A standard pressure is 29.92 inches at a standard temperature at mean sea level. The instrument used to measure this pressure in an aircraft is the altimeter. As an aircraft climbs, the pressure decreases and the altimeter reflects this as an increase in altitude and the reverse for descending. When a pilot starts a flight, he is given an altimeter setting from the tower or other radio source and sets this in his altimeter window. If all is correct, the altimeter should read the elevation of the airport where he is sitting on the ground. As you fly at lower levels across the country, under 18,000 feet, each station that you contact via radio gives you a local altimeter setting, which you much, must repeat back to them. This is, a critical, this is critical since at lower levels there is more aircraft traffic and adjustments must be uniform so that the aircraft are all using accurate settings, which it gives the correct altitude reading, like 15,000 feet. And the plane passing under you at 14,000 feet is actually at 14,000 feet. Also, when you are landing, it is cru- critical to have an accurate altimeter setting because landing procedures are built in altitudes, particularly if you're flying on instruments and can't see the ground. Above 18,000 feet, the pilot will set a standard 29.92 inches in the altimeter and leave that setting until he descends below 18,000 feet again. At that setting, all aircraft are at their assigned altitudes relative to each other. So it's like a fake reality, but if they are all faking, it's the same. It's okay. And the guy writes, funny, that is the description, fake reality. And the last part, he says, an autopilot uses inputs from several sensors, a gyroscope for direction and movement from a set position, but altitude is strictly a pressure proposition, so the input would have to be in form of a pressure instrument such as the altimeter or pressure sensing device, not a gyroscope. Hmm. The pilot or autopilot via the pressure input is actually maintaining a constant pressure, which shows as constant altitude on the altimeter and is flying at constant height above the ground. This may mean making adjustments as you fly. So the aircraft is actually following the curvature of the earth. And the guy writes in red at the end. So they fly completely dependent on the instruments, assuming it is doing what they are told they do. Yeah, interesting. Uh doesn't really countermand the, the, the pilots I've already talked to, and I'd love to get this guy on record. Come on, because there'd be a whole bunch of questions I'd like to ask him. Uh, any, any pilot. And, and the answer is we don't. I'm sorry. The peanut gallery is writing in here as I'm doing this. The peanut gallery says, on the bullet question is, do they have to adjust for direction? North, east, west, south. Yeah, all would have different effects, not just latitude. And the answer is we don't. Yeah, the, the bullet one is, is so interesting. And I'll, I'll break it down for you guys really, real easy. And that is when if anyone shoots, if anyone uses a scope, you know full well. I mean, unless you're using some, some heavy, heavy weapons which account for uh, barometric pressure and temperature and stuff like that. A scope really only has two things on it. One is uh, elevation and two – I'm sorry. One is windage and the, yeah, and the other is elevation, right? Elevation and windage, yeah. And 
there's no the, – if, if we were accounting for the Coriolis effect with long-range snipers like on a Barrett 50 or something, you'd have to – you'd have a compass on there, a very detailed compass. It'd have to be a digital compass and you'd have to have a chart and you'd have to know where you were on the map. Not only would you have to know where, where you're pointing, not just north or south or east or west, but, but tiny degrees, but you'd also have to know where on the world, on a globe you were shooting because that would also affect the Coriolis. It's, there's two, and we've never ever seen this ever. You know, old movies all the way up until now. I mean, there's that's a lot of different calculations. It's just it's just point. Where is it? Okay, how far? What's the elevation? What's the windage? Take aim, fire. That's basically it. Otherwise, it would take them all so long for an artillery calling calling in artillery shots. Would be very very tough. Just saying. This next one is called enclosed system. Mark, are you solely a supporter of the dome model? I myself am not sure there is a dome. I know all of the dome imagery around the world and the media, etc. But perhaps there is an actual atmosphere above the flat Earth, like a dome. Well, that, wouldn't that be kind of like? Wouldn't that be a dome? I've recently started a website for the latest flat Earth news, as well as my opinions and such. And I think it's croxer c o r o x e r dot blogspot dot c a. So that's cool. Yeah, no, I do, I do believe in the dome for, for several reasons. The one is the atmosphere problem, which we talked about earlier. Without a dome-like structure, you're going to have to account for the vacuum problem. So if you say it's an infinite plane, which is fine. I, I don't know if the ratio is 70-30 or 80-20 dome to infinite plane, but I know the majority of people go along the dome. And you can look up the ancient uh, – all, all the different groups where there's the Japanese, the Chinese, or the Hindu – Sumerians or whatever, the, um, yes, most of the models, some of the models have domes and some of them don't, but the majority of them have some sort of dome structure. And if you're in Christianity, you're absolutely are going into the dome because it's called the firmament, which divides the waters above and the waters below. But either way, if you don't have a dome, you're going to have to account for the vacuum of space. Because if you, don't, if you have an infinite plane, then you're still, what do you, what's above you? Is it space? Uh, the dome answers a lot of those questions. It's, it doesn't matter if there's space because you're inside a dome. It doesn't matter what's outside the planetarium or terrarium or sports stadium or whatever you want to call it because you're encased. And if it is enclosed like a planetarium, the atmosphere inside it is somewhat pressurized. I mean, yeah, it, it, there's, it's so big that you actually have layers of atmosphere, like layers of water pressure, but it works. It works very efficiently, and I think it's a, I think, I think it's a better model. Am I going to lose any sleep? Am I going to curl up into a fetal position and, and cry for a year on end if there is no dome? No. No, I'm not. But I've got to lean one way or the other when it comes to this, and so I'm going to lean towards the dome. I, that's what the clues were about. And all the media, if you believe in predictive programming, and I do, all the media points towards, uh, whether it's the Simpsons show or Dark City or the Truman's show or, or take your pick. In fact, interesting because one of the movies I, I mentioned was The Village, M. Night Shyamalan's movie, and that one didn't have a dome. But that was a whole other animal. So thank you for writing that in, though. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. And it is a first come, first serve thing. So don't be shy. Call in. You're not gonna you're not gonna sound dumb. I swear. In fact, I, it, I'm on this is show ninety-eight, if I'm not mistaken. I'm gonna hit a hundred uh, in, when I get into April. So next week I'll be 99. Yeah, that'll be in the middle of April. Oh, there's 845 area code. Let's pick them up, shall we? You are on live with Strange World right now. Where are you calling from? Hello, Mark. It's Mark from New York. How are you, sir? Hey, man. What's going on in New York? Not much. Dreary days. It's been so gray and nasty out here. Ugh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hear you. It's been raining. It, I'm on the completely the other end. You know, I'm up, up north of Seattle, and it rained all day. Ah, uh, wonderful. Yeah, it was gross. But that's okay. It gave me a chance to work on work on more stuff. Focus from the sky, from seeing the sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's uh, what's new? Not much. Um, actually, a friend and a friend of mine. And I and actually we're going to try and get a couple other people. We're going to try and coordinate and do an experiment um, 
doing positioning of the sun and see if we can all do it simultaneously from multiple parts of the country, possibly even maybe see if we can get some other people from another country to participate. And he's going to do all the math and do all the triangulation and we're going to try to figure out where that sucker is. <laughs> right on. Um, do you want to, do you want to give out your email address in case somebody wants to get a hold of you and, and help you with the experiment? Oh, sure. Certainly. Certainly. It's Z U L U O N E zero one at yahoo.com. Zulu one zero one at yahoo.com. So Zulu one zero one at yeah, well, I'm sorry. At what.com? At Yahoo. Yahoo.com. Cool. Cool. That's awesome. awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. What, what, yeah, uh, that makes- what inspired this? I'm sorry? What inspired this test? Well, we were chatting and we were talking about a few different things. And I posed a question regarding the North Star and the Southern Pole point since there is no star there yeah regarding whether they were actually 180 degrees out and he and i was going to say i have cop men on this right now (laughs) 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 and uh we started talking and he was like you know what we should we should triangulate the sun and we could even do the moon if we could do from multiple points throughout the country and i was like fantastic we're gonna have to do that Cool. So we have at least three of us, possibly a fourth, and actually somebody emailed me who sub- subbed to me from Australia. I'm going to try to get a hold of him, and I think Wesley at Flat Earth News has somebody in Australia. Maybe we can get them in on it. Cool. And see if we can do it all at the exact time. Same time, I mean. Huh. Cool. That's I'd awesome. Like- awesome. Thanks. I'd-, I'd like to see if somebody... I- I got to hit the damn lottery so I can start sponsoring some of these damn experiments. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll happen, man. Don't, don't, it, things are yeah. progressing quite nicely. I mean, you know, the, the, the flat earth is, 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 is charging ahead this year in 2017. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh, I have a, uh, I have a quote for the peanut gallery. All right. What's the quote? Cause he's already got one queued up. What, what's yours? <laughs> oh, I love the peanut gallery. All right, this is Buddha. In the sky, there is no distinction of east and west. People create distinctions out of their own minds and then believe them to be true. Nice. That's good. And, and, I'm, and I'm applying that to us now because I, a little, you know, we had a little stuff with uh, Eric Dushy there and <laughs> don't want people to thrive off of the negative energy i know so and I'm, yeah you, you catch I'm, more you catch more flies with honey than you do vinegar and uh, you, you you know i've already said it look he's got a he's got a shelf life at this point and you know for what reason but uh it, uh, it was it was frustrating to see him what well, i was upset you probably didn't hear this on uh on globusters but he you know uh jaron was one of the few people, in fact, he was the only guy I knew that was in the Flyers community that was in touch with B.O.B., the rapper, right? Oh, no, I didn't. I missed that part. Oh, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this wasn't what, what you didn't know was they were out of touch for a while and Jaron reached out to B.O.B. and, you know, because he, he had heard that interview that B.O.B. did on Hot 97 Radio and said, look, if, right. you need, if you need some talking points, you want me to give you some crib notes, I'm more than happy to do this for you. And he find, and he finds out that the the reason why Bob wasn't in recent contact with Jaron was because that Eric told him not to trust him because he was a shill. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's like what a jackass! It's, seriously, dude, come on! It's like, that that's I mean, that's the sort sort of shots you're gonna take. Come on, that's yeah, awesome. I was. At the at the computer, what the? What is wrong with you? I know. You know I just get it, and I mean, he didn't even have anybody to recommend. I know. He well, there, there's your ego right there. I mean, I've seen this with corporate guys. You know, I I spent the early part of my career, or you know, around guys that were corporate climbers, and that's the mentality, which is 
if you, I mean, that shows you there's your, there's your end goal. He wants to be on top so badly that he can't even recommend people on his own team to the point where I don't, honestly, I don't know who's on his team. Who is it? Is there anyone on his team? Anybody with 5,000 subscribers or more out there that's on his team? So yeah, that's ridiculous. I, I just I know it's going to be a lonely year for him if he because again he, the conference is going to happen and sure. it, you know we're it's going to be just it's going to be a love fest if it's anything like the the last two social events I've been to which have been pretty small you know but multiply that by a lot and I mean it's going to be great there's going to be so much positive energy there. He's not. He's not going to be a part of it. He is totally missing the biggest opportunity of his young life. But right. eh, you know what? I I think it's very childish of him. You yeah. know, uh, one of my friends pointed out, and he's younger. You know, he's in his thirties. Yeah. And he said this, like you know, that is just a a boy in a yeah. man's body. Say, you know, yeah. I, I, somebody. And and sure. and, and uh, um, not I, I, we're running out of time here before the break. But like oh. Eddie Bravo, Eddie Bravo reached out to him. You know, during, it's like, hey, I want to be your friend. Let's hang out at a, at a martial arts tournament over in your neck of the woods. You can come out there. Yeah. I'll, give you, I'll give you backstage passes. And he shut right. him down he, right there on air. It's like, what in the world, man? Come on. Right. Oh, I can't do that. That would be boring for me. Or so, whatever. What a jerk! You can't be, at least there. Hey, that's a great idea. Maybe we'll go. Exactly. Yeah. Do do what do what girls do, and that is, oh yeah, I'd love to go with you again. And then you don't call, right? But in his case, it's like, yeah, blow him off on air, blow him off on a live feed. That makes sense. That makes about as much sense as doing doing an Alex Jones impersonation on air. And I can't imagine that he's gonna. Oh crap! Hey, we we gotta go to break, man. Sorry. All right. All right. You have a good one. All right. I'll I will talk to you soon, though. Okay. All right, thank you. Keep up the good work, Mark. All right, Talk to you see later. Bye bye. Bye bye. Real people, real radio. Initiating the truth frequency. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Truth is often stranger than fiction, and a caller is coming in right now. 303 area code. 303 area code. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, before, um, before my- you say anything, because i got to get these out, uh, the peanut gallery to respond to Mark from New York, and unfortunately we had to go to break. So the two quotes were from the peanut gallery. Truth is stranger than fiction, but it is because fiction is obliged to stick to the possibilities. Truth isn't. And the second one is, you will not be punished for your anger. You will be punished by your anger. That's from Buddha. (laughs) Okay. Nice. So you're calling from Colorado. I'm calling from Colorado, and I had a question on the flat earth theory. Cool. Um, My question was, um, volcanoes produce lava. Where does this lava come from if there's no center to the earth? Good point. I uh, and and do, have you watched all the flat earth clues that I that I've I did? watched a, I've watched a lot of them my son you know forwards them to me and I I've seen a lot of them but oh. it just you know as far as earthquakes and lava and volcanoes and stuff I mean I don't understand how that can be Yeah know? it's again it's a stretch of of our belief system no question but and lava is the toughest because it's one of the few things that we never really explore. Meaning, you know, we do a lot of stuff in the upper atmosphere, and that'd be you know, like the jet stream. Uh, the jet stream for for me is just a giant air conditioning system in this place, and the underwater conveyor system is just an underwater, no different than the jet stream, but in water. 
And when it comes to rock formations and lava, I say that that's an artificial si- system as well. Because don't forget that the deepest hole ever drilled is only eight miles. And yet science, mainstream science will tell you what the, the exact composition of the core of the earth looks like. You know, if it's, if it's 4,000 miles to the center of the earth, 8,000 miles all the way across, and you look in any 561 area code, you got to have to wait till this call is done. The, yeah, you see all those equal bands, you know, the red band and the orange band and the yellow band. And, and it's weird because they're always about the same thickness. You know, it's like a gobstopper if you, if you cross-section it. The thing is, how do they know this? So when it comes to lava, I just think it's a, a, another part of the artificial system. You know, we can, we can melt rock now. We can, we can do molten rock on a, on a smaller scale. If this place is very, very big, who's to say that you couldn't have molten rock on a large scale? And some people say, oh, no, okay. it have to be part of a, it have to be part of an art, a natural system. I'm going, man, that's the last thing you'd ever want to be part of a natural system. So and, does it blow this theory out of water if the Yellowstone volcano goes off and it's a mega volcano? Well, yes, and, oh, it, you're absolutely and then, right. And, but, but that was my point because – one super volga- volcano and it's game over. That's it. And yeah, we've had some major volcanoes that have gone off, but no super volcanoes have, have been recorded by our civilization. And, and some people say, well, you know, that doesn't happen very often. It's like, yeah, but I think it's just part of the, the, the scariness of, of the world, which is there's a threat of a super volcano, but it's never going to take us out. You know, it's, it's just part of the ride. No, you know, we have, we have volcanoes that'll go off like Vesuvius and Krakatoa and, you know, you'll, you'll see a few islands blown up here and there, but nothing on an extinction level event. So, well, like, you know, I was up in the northern part of the country when Mount St. Helens went off and, you know, that, that was a big explosion as far as I'm concerned and the biggest one I've ever seen. And so all that came over into Coraline, Idaho, where I was staying, the, right. you know, the ash. So... Something that of that magnitude. How? Think think of it this way. I know it's tough to think that big because we we are conditioned to think small. We are conditioned to believe that we are small. But if we are in a giant structure, you know, a very very large version of the Truman Show. If if we are in a building, if if you don't want to think there's a dome, that's fine. But but either way, it's a. Uh, 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 the ground structure alone is thousands and thousands of miles wide, then how hard would it be for them to design an, an, a heating system underneath this that could produce magma flows? Would not be that tough. And I know it's, it's difficult for, for people to get their head around it, but I don't think it's any harder than a jet stream or the underwater conveyor system or tectonic plates or any of the other fun stuff that's out there. Yeah, it just, it just, I don't know. It just, I know. I can't grab. I can't grab that theory that they would want to have the volcanoes destroy things and want to have earthquakes to destroy things if this was an artificial world. It, <laughs> all right, <laughs> let, let me take it a different way. If you are, because remember, you this whole. If you believe this world is a planetarium, a terrarium, an amusement park ride, like Bill Hicks used to yeah. say, he always used to say it was a ride. Yeah. Remember, remember, there's roller coasters and then there's haunted house roller coasters, right? You know, a slow moving roller coaster with things that pop out at you and jump around. Why? Why yeah. does the roller coaster have to be any scarier than that? Have you ever been to Space Mountain? One of the Disney, been to Disneyland or Disney World? I haven't been on that particular ride. No. Okay, but I've that's been that's on a some roller, of the rides there. That's a roller coaster in the dark. <laughs> That's a yeah. that's a roller coaster that's basically put in a it, it's a fast roller coaster in the dark. Why in the heck would you want to do it to make it even more thrilling? And uh, look at all the the stuff that we have in our world. This world is made out of pure conflict, pure stress. Uh, we there's we, in fact conflict is unavoidable here. And there's so yeah. many things that, that can go wrong. You know, for me, the, the volcanoes, that's just another aspect of it. Is, is a volcano any scarier than a meteor? Any scarier than a hurricane? Any scarier than a tsunami? You know, they, they all play their part. And that is they, they keep you on the edge of your seat. You, you don't get – very few times do people get very uh, content and complacent here. Anyway, that's where I was going. Okay. Okay. All righty. Any, anything well, else you want to throw at me? 
Nope, that's that was my question. Thank any, you very much. Any any shout outs? Anyone you want to say hi to? Um, well, my son who introduced me to you is listening, and so is my husband. Oh, that's nice. So, I'm I'm glad you guys okay. are listening. If you have any more questions, okay. you know, feel free to you know call in or okay. email them to me. All righty, thank you very much. All right, have a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. Operators are standing by, and by that I mean me. So be nice, because no matter where you go, there you are. And while we're waiting for phone calls, let's see if we can get through some of these emails so I don't have to do as many email shows because I've done, what, 29 email shows? And that's just that's just the leftover emails that I couldn't get because i got enough people calling in on the show now that I can only read like I don't know, 10, 12 emails a show. And here's another one. Who's 541 Area Code? That sounds kind of familiar. I think it's a first-time caller. 541 Area Code, where are you calling from? Hey, this is Josh from Oregon. Hey, Josh. Have you ever called in here before? I haven't called in yet. Um, it's my first time. Are you nervous? But I will say I was the caller that um, let you know about the Eddie Bravo thing right before you went on air a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Eddie Bravo thing where, yeah, I was, I was just about to do a show and then I heard that Eddie Bravo was doing that live feed from the restaurant. And yeah, that's... yeah, no, I I had just jumped on Facebook and I just randomly saw Eddie Bravo. I was like, oh, that looks interesting. And then he's just going on about Flat Earth and I'm like, dude, Mark's got to know about this. So oh, I yeah, you yeah. I, was, I was listening to it literally up to the minute before I came on live for this show. Because that's it, awesome. And, what, and what a great thing that was because it started the beginning of a small odyssey. The the right. Right, so many little dramatic effects that were happening there between Alex Jones and Eddie Bravo, where Eddie does the stream the night before the show at the restaurant. Alex isn't there, but they let him ramble with drinks for about two hours. <laughs> I don't know, maybe forty something minutes, fifty minutes of it was flat Earth. Then he goes on the Alex Jones show, and he doesn't talk about flat Earth because you could tell Alex didn't want to talk about it. Then he did a follow-up show the next night, which rumor was that it was canceled, but it wasn't canceled, but it wasn't going to be released either. They released that one 10 days later and didn't matter because those three streams, when they put them up in the InfoWars channel, were all pulled down in less than 12 hours. It was yeah, yeah that I didn't I, I didn't know about that 10, uh, the 10 day thing because I, I was watching their nightly news the day that he was there. Yeah. And so this is a really interesting thing is that they said, Hey, he's going to be on. Um, they did a whole segment. They talked about dinosaurs, I think it was. And then right. she said, "Hey, and he's going to be back to talk about some more interesting conspiracy theories." And so he never came back on to talk about them. They just ended the show. So that yeah, was, it's so weird that they yeah. You know, I I, I thought they, yeah, I had heard from everybody else it's like, oh, that's that that second Alex Jones. Uh, not the not the restaurant, but the second official one where he was actually at the station. I heard it was canceled, and then. Right. He puts it up, and that last one was only – I don't think it was even up eight hours because they were monitoring social media, the comments, very, very closely. And there was enough people that said, look, I'm going to unsubscribe if you don't pull this. And so they pulled it. Yeah. And then, so and then of course, he brings – he does his special interview with Eric and you know, that whole odyssey. And – it was amazing. I mean, the series of events that that went went on, it was incredible. Plus, of course, the Eddie Bravo is tied to Joe Rogan, and Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah. I'm going to read this at the top of the hour. I, you know, I'm, I when I type in flat Earth and I set the filter to one week, Joe Rogan's in there a lot. Not really? not not just people reporting on Joe Rogan. Three three different Joe Rogan channels are in there. He's he's got people don't realize this. He's got a massive massive internet presence and especially a YouTube presence. He's all over YouTube. It's very right. very smart guy. Whoever's running the production on keeping Joe on YouTube, it's it's amazing. So. Well, and I I think I mentioned this to you in an email, but just to kind of you know sync it up with the caller with the the email. Um, Joe was actually a guy that I was friends with um, a little over ten years ago, oh, and wow. uh, we were you know loosely friends he was dating a friend of mine um when i was working out in hollywood mm-hmm. and so i spent actually quite a bit of time with him 
And the guy was, yeah, very much into conspiracies. We spent lots of time talking about 9-11 and all kinds of stuff. And just interesting to see, you know, like you said, like where he's kind of come. Um, yeah. You know, at first I was real, when you were kind of hard on him, like, yeah, you know, maybe not, you know, just trying to, it's just weird just when you know somebody and then it's like, you know, the more it just comes out, it does look really weird. Yeah. Again, he's one of the only guys I know of that used to be in conspiracy. I mean, you know full well. I mean, you once you're into conspiracies, you're always into conspiracies. And right. who who turns again? It's like you you don't go back. You don't you don't plug yourself back in and say, oh no, everything's completely legit. The mainstream news right. is absolutely authentic. All the scientists are absolutely authentic. No one would ever lie to us ever ever ever. And that's right. that's what he did. I although I will say what he's doing now is clever. It's kind of a loophole. He's he's bringing it up without bringing it up. And he's honestly he's he's exposing more people to flat Earth than a lot of people in flat Earth right now. Right. I mean, he's still making fun and of so, it, but he isn't trying to right. crucify it like John B. Wells. Right, and it's so interesting too, just how Eddie is like totally into it, and you know, has been a co-host on there, and yeah, the whole thing is so bizarre. I don't know even what to think about it. I'm like, well, the last... I, I want to reconnect with this guy and be like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're not going to get an answer. In fact, he had some guy recently stage a question. Uh, I, yeah. I I can't remember the the name of the guy who was who was on his channel who wanted to ask us like, oh hey, well how why are you not against the moon anymore? And and Joe just kind of danced around it for ten fifteen minutes. And but the thing was, you could tell that he wanted that question. He wasn't even surprised by that question. His facial reaction, he was waiting for it, and he still kind of danced around it. And yeah. Whatever. I mean, he's getting the word out there, which is great. He's given us tons yeah. of exposure, which is great. And I hope that you know maybe one day he'll be let off the hook, but I doubt it because once you right. – he you can't – let's put it this way. He can't go against Apollo, then you're for Apollo, then against it. Again, your credibility right. is shot at that point. You're, I mean you've already had Neil deGrasse Tyson on your show multiple times and uh, – so, yeah. And, and, uh, hey, just to throw one thing out. Yeah. yeah. One thing, just real quick, wanted to just confirm. I know you talked about having like a sniper instructor on and him talking about that, and I've known that that's the, the Coriolis effect and all that's got to be, you know, totally bogus. But yeah. uh, I have a friend who is a he was he did three tours in Iraq and was a Marine sniper, and so I just decided, hey, I'm gonna email him, not tell him about flat Earth. I know he's not into it at all. Um, but anyways, he wrote me back last night and said, I said, Hey, do you take this into effect? And he just said, um, let's see. He said, the, the core effect is something that's real and affects bullets at long distances, probably more than 2000 meters. While we did learn about it in sniper school and its effects, it has on bullets. It's not a factor considered on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. The core effect is seen in the movie shooter, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, basically He's saying that, like, yeah, they talked about it in sniper school, but they didn't actually train them in it, so, yeah. and they don't use it. No, no, and that's the same thing <laughs> so, ev every one of my subject matter experts said, Yeah, which, which is we've all heard about it, but nobody right. uses it in their day-to-day -day jobs. Anybody. Nobody uses it. Exactly. Artillery, torpedo, missile, bullet. And, I mean, artillery guys, they're shooting at 20, 30 miles, and the missile guys are shooting at 50, 60 miles and probably longer. Torpedoes are, are go – most people don't know that torpedoes go 25 miles now. They don't use it. And if they don't yeah. use it, you gotta know, you got to wonder why. And it's because it's not yeah. there. It's great. It's, I know. It's, it's, and they throw out this arbitrary number like, yeah, I think past, you know – you know, two kilometers, then we would take into consideration, but they're not shooting past that. No, so we're they're not, not going to train them. Past that. So therefore, yeah. 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 Plus, it's so plus, bogus. But, anyways, yeah. It's, yeah, I was it's, just going to say that was just a little confirmation out there for people. You know, I've been listening for, you know, probably six months now, and I knew that that was the case, but I just, knowing that I had this friend who was actually a Marine Corps sniper, it's nice to be able to, like, talk to him and just confirm that. Yeah. Find me, find me somebody that uses it. Somebody, again, it's been, Oh boy, 18, 20 months or so since I've started doing the show. I put it out there. It's like, find me somebody that will go out against the military guys. That You know, you can come on anonymously. Give me a chart. Give right. me a chart that you'll use. Nobody has a chart. Anyway. Right. Uh, and then any, Joe Rogan and Neil deGrasse Tyson will go on and say how they do that. It's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. You guys are silly. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, and, man, and what are you doing? Uh, yeah, to my brother in Oregon, my, my boss, Stephen, who I turned on to the whole flat earth thing. 
uh, engineer, smart guy. He's all into it now. Cool. And uh, yeah, just thanks for what you're doing, man. And uh, oh, very, on. very welcome. I'm, I'm going to see this thing through to the end, wherever that end may take us. <laughs> all right. Sounds all right. good. You have a good rest of your all night, right, okay? You. Thank you. All, all right. right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Phone number to call in is 720-897. I sound like an auctioneer, don't I? 6111. That phone number again is 720-897-6111. And let's see if I can squeeze in an email before the next person calls and before the next break. Nope, couldn't even do that. 704 is calling in. Who is 704? 704, area code. You are on with Strange World. Don't be nervous. Is this your first time? Nope, I'm the first time. This is Flip from North Carolina. Hey, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. Um, Colin, uh, I called a while back and asked about a, a website to find the location of the moon. And uh, then Mark called in tonight. He was talking about finding the sun's location and triangulating it. Well, <clears throat> that's the same idea I've had for a while about with the moon. Um but something interesting I run into. I got a website I was looking at um, as for where the moon's location is. Yeah. And so one night I was, uh, it was the last full moon here in March. We went over to a hill that in where I live, a little town called Gastonia. And he got Charlotte out in the distance. And the moon was going to rise behind Charlotte. So we were going to go watch it. So when I get up there, I was looking to see what time it rose and and what direction I should be looking in. Okay. And so I got up there, and it said it would rise at nine forty or seven forty three or whatever, eighty seven degree angle. Okay. I was kind of like, oh, okay, that's interesting. So it did. It, it rose. I checked it with a compass. Checked it with my a compass on my phone. Also, eighty seven degrees. I mean, it come right up. Okay. Well, when you take it back to a map. I went back to the house and checked the uh, moon's location. It was over Nigeria when it rose. Really? Which is in the West, West Africa. Yeah. Interesting. And so on a, obviously on any kind of Mercator map or, or globe map, 87 degrees is going to put you in France or Spain or somewhere over there. But yeah. this is, way off so on a flat map it's closer to 87 but obviously the map's not perfect so i don't know if we can find the exact location by using that other than using a program that's already found it because of um whatever they know where it's at or whatever sure sure interesting that's that's cool and i'm sorry what what you said you had a website that was yeah, I, I can't remember what it was. It was I just uh, went in and Yod referred me to the Peanut Gallery. Referred me to I think it was MoonLocator dot org or oh moon, right moon, right 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 moon dot org. Yep, and I, it wasn't working out, so I ended up using a another website. I just typed in MoonLocator and found it. And I don't have it with me right now, so gotcha. I can't remember this. Well, I mean, if you want to work yeah, on so. it, if you want to work on it again, you you might want to contact Zulu One, the the guy you know Mark from New York that called in earlier. Maybe you could be part of the the test that they're going to do. Absolutely, yeah. Because I I, I think with that with what I just did, I'm going to email um, Zulu One here in, here in a little while. I want to get a yeah. chance. But um, with with what I did, it definitely proved it, it's definitely proof that. The globe's not, it's not a globe because, like I said, an 87 degree angle, it's coming up at 87 degree angle. There's no way you end up in West Africa. Right. No way. So that was fairly interesting. I just Excellent thought I'd call in. I like it. Put that in there. Cool. Any, uh, anything else? No, man, that's about it. Any shout outs? Nah, ain't nobody know me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, at least you're honest. I will right, we'll talk to you. All right, man. You have a good night, okay? And he's gone. All right, phone number to call in, 720-897-6111. That number is 720-897-6111.
This email from Steve. Hey, Sarge, I know you're busier than last year, but I don't know if you're getting my emails or not. Attached is an image mock-up I made from Reddit. I got an image of Seattle from space. Thought it looked odd the way the curvature was presented. So I photoshopped a circle to match the radius of the curvature in the picture and will hopefully determine if this is a fake image. Just doesn't look right. The United States would take up half the globe if the curvature is correct. Check it out, Steve. Yeah, you can do this with just about any picture from, they say, from space. If you want to superimpose it on top of some sort of circle, they're not going to match up. Sort of like the Red Bull jump. If you take the Red Bull Felix Bumgardner picture with that heavy, heavy curve on it, it, that picture would have had to have been taken from tens of thousands of miles away from from the Earth. And and it wasn't. It was supposedly taken only 20 miles up. And the same thing with this Washington one. The Washington one would have even been worse. And it's like, okay, where where the 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 map does not match up. They they put the extra curve in. It's like, it's, like, it's like ordering extra whipped cream at a coffee house. Put some extra curve in that picture. Happens all the time. This one is called Flat Earth Pictures with a P900 has Masters in Physics and Math. The guy says he has a Masters in Physics and Math and found no curvature in Norway. And the YouTube video is called My First Flat Earth Pictures with a Nikon P900 83 pound, 83 X zoom camera. So look that up. My first flat earth pictures. You can probably just type that in and the guide is a nice little video and I will thumb that up when I get done with this. So awesome. Really, really cool. And it was also carboned to Bob from Globusters. What else? This one's called moon and Mars photo farce ammunition for the flat earth. Can we get through this? Yes, we can before the break. Yeah, I think we can. Hello, Mark. My name is Colin Griffiths. You can say my name. From the UK, I don't know how much you've looked into images from the rovers and orbiters from Mars and the moon. Oh, there we got a phone call. 214, area code. We may have to take this guy through the break because he only got like 90 seconds. 214, area code. Are you there? Yes, I am. And where are you calling from? Chris, uh, it's in Dallas. This is Chris Pontius. <laughs> hey, Chris. What's going on? Do you do you want to? Is there quite a bit to talk about? You only got like uh, seventy seconds, maybe eighty seconds before the break. Do you want to talk and then go go through the break? Uh, sure. I just wanted to call real quick and say hi and let you know I uh, got some uh, more models built and right on. Uh, working on some new things and really really looking forward to being at the convention. Oh yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'm excited because you're you're going to be you're going to be bringing these models out there. Yeah, I'm going to have to bring a whole truckload full of stuff. I think. Nice. <laughs> oh, I think you'll. I think you're going to make a killing out there because it, you're you're one of the only people. The um, there's another guy that's making flat Earth coffee tables, but you're the only one that's really making three dimensional models at the moment. Yeah, it's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, it's you know, with all the people in the world, it's very rare to be the first at anything it's hard actually i know well you you started out pretty small though i remember i got one of your early betas and it had lights on it and a, and a dome and it was cool it was really cool but since then you've added a lot of bells and whistles you want to you want to talk about those real quick uh yeah well the, the trying to figure out how to get the uh the stars to rotate was been challenging and then i i uh ended up making my own domes, um, figuring out a way to make them pressure, heat them up and form them, and then took a Dremel tool and started drilling and etching in the acrylic, and when it edge lighted, they'd light up. So a lot of people asked me about the uh, doing constellations. So I have, a friend of mine actually has a CNC laser, yeah. and we found the program online, and he etched one, and I formed it, and it looks really cool. It has the the constellations laid out like they're supposed to be with the uh, with them grouped together, and then has them labeled little tiny uh, names etched in the acrylic, so you can see it's really nice. awesome. Nice. Hey, uh, we're we're going to a break, so stay with us for three minutes, and then we'll uh, give you all your information when we come back. Okay. Okay. Your protection from, 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 from deception. This is Truth Frequency Radio. Nothing. I told you I was gonna do all that. 
Welcome back to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. And we have Chris Pontius on the line with us. And we were talking about his three-dimensional flat earth models that he's been creating for how no. uh, Since November, uh, October of 2015. So, yeah, you're way uh, ahead of the game. In fact, in fact well, you don't even really have any competition at the moment, right? No, I'm surprised, actually. I'm surprised, no one... too. I mean, the, the coffee table stuff is sort of competition, but it's a coffee table, so it's a little different. Yeah, well... But you're making one bigger ones have... now. Yeah, well, the, the, I've made some 21-inch domes here. The new coffee table that I came up with has a 21-inch uh, a model in the middle of it. Yeah, that was a really and cool It's much little. nicer because I hand-painted the map in there, and then it, it left more room to do... Uh, uh, drill more holes for the light up the cities and stuff because when, when it's only 12 inches in diameter, it's really tiny and hard to do detail work in there that small. Right. But uh, the bigger it gets, you can there's more room to work in there. Awesome. Awesome. That's but really cool. The uh, thing I was wondering about, Mark, is there's a, you know, we're called flat earthers, and there's got to be a better name for us than that. <laughs> Well, at this point, you've probably heard all the variations. Flat Earth Truthers, Flat Earthers, um, Tinfoil Hat People, <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I mean, in fact, part of the my speech that I'm going to be giving at the, the Flat Earth Convention is going to be going over some of the colorful language used against us. Ah. So, but no, well, right now, I, I don't mind being a Flat Earther. Heck, you know, that's that's the, the most common term that's out there. And well, I kind of I just emailed some people to call them flatsters. That's another funny name, or or flatter, flatter, flatter but yeah, but, yeah. The problem but, is though, if you if you start shortening it that, you're going to go into the uh, the debunking versions like flat tards, and yeah. compared compared to globe tards, and I just call them globalists because it it's uh, lots of people. Everyone knows the globalist term, so. Anyways. Well, I, another thing, I, uh, I saw a lot of people have got these custom license plates done. Yeah. I'm in the process. I have an Acura MDX, and it has right across the back door, uh, it says Acura. And, you know, it's about, the name plate's chrome. It's about, the letters are about an inch tall, maybe about a foot long, spread out. Well, I'm going to take the, taking that off of there and having a little name plate uh, uh, CNC'd out and chroming and putting in there with some red little LEDs behind it. It says the earth is flat instead of Acura. <laughs> Get some nice. People's attention. nice. That's cool. Like, yeah, in another, what, two or three days, I'm going to be releasing the April Flat Earth compilation. And we've got quite a few, you know, more uh, more every week. In fact, we've got another, another Canadian province. And uh, I think it was Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. And, oh. yeah, I mean, New Mexico and New Hampshire. And, oh, I can't look behind my screen, but I think we had another five or six. They came in just since the last one, so it's really cool. I you know people are putting themselves out there. It's fantastic. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if you know people drive by and honking at me or what happens with that. Yeah, and and some of these people are going to be driving to the convention because we're on the East Coast, so there's we're within striking distance of quite a few of those states that are out there. And I know yeah. for a fact some people are going to be driving their their flat Earth cars. That's going to be really fun. I'm not, but that's just because I'm in the complete opposite end of the country. Well, I'm uh, definitely driving there. I have to bring all the stuff with me. To oh, right. So I, I'm going to need like a whole showroom to put all the things I'm bringing there. To the uh, well, if you need help, just tap, shoulder tap me. Hopefully I won't be too busy But I because uh, I'm doing uh, the luncheon thing on the first day and the award show on the second day. But, uh, yeah, it'll be fun. I can't wait. It's going to be a blast. I mean, we got so much time between now and then. Uh, the, the hype's going to be amazing. I hope there's a lot of media that show up, at the very least, just, just to, to, to explore the curiosity value of it. Yeah, well, I'm just I'm excited just to meet everybody that's yeah. part of this. Yeah, going to be, going to be a blast. Um, do you want to send people to your website before we go on to another caller? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Flat Earth Models. Dot com, okay. and uh, I've got it set up, and I've got some new ones on there posted for sale. Yep, and you and, could also uh, type in Flat Earth, because I've done a couple of videos on, on your stuff already. Type in Chris Pontius, P-O-N-T-I-U-S, Flat, and you should get at least one or two of the videos that I put out on, on some of your stuff. Awesome. 
Yeah. And then I have a lady that's uh, got the YouTube channel set up for me and is doing some blogging and nice uh, uh, social media work for me. But uh, excellent. Anyway, it's really nice talking to you, Mark. Keep up yeah. the good work, and Thank you. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you uh, in November. Well, I'm sure we'll talk before then. So, <laughs> all right, man. You have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. All right, phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That phone number is 720-897-6111. Check out enclosedworld.com or just type in, you know what, just type in Flat Earth into YouTube. You will find so much stuff. You don't even have to type in Flat Earth Clues, but if you type in Flat Earth Clues, you'll get my stuff. My channel is called Mark K. Sargent. And please subscribe, like all my vids, watch all sorts of fun things, and and have fun with it because you're going to lose a whole bunch of sleep if you've never looked into it. Flat Earth News, so all I'm doing is I'm going into YouTube, I'm typing in Flat Earth, and I'm setting the filter to one week, although I should probably set it more than one week because we missed last week. But you know what? Let's do one week and see what happens. And the first thing I notice is that Joe Rogan has got a much bigger presence this week than he has before. So like nine hours ago, the Joe Rogan fan page, which has 101,000 subscribers. He put out the Joe Rogan and Lawrence Krauss thing. And then also the Joe Rogan University fan channel. That has 113,000 subscribers. Same thing, Joe Rogan and Lawrence Krauss. Lawrence Krauss was not a pleasant man when it comes to addressing the flat earth concept, but it shouldn't surprise anybody because everybody reacts that way. 540 area code, calling in. Let's pick him up. 540 area code, where are you calling from? Is this your first time? What are we talking about? Uh, yeah, this is my first time. I'm from Atl- I'm from Virginia, but I'm calling from Atlanta right now. Oh, cool. What, uh, what's uh, in your mind? Yeah. Uh, I'm first time caller, so kind of nervous. But... I'm sorry, what? Yeah, I, I'm first time caller. Oh, okay. Can you hear me fine? I can hear you fine. You're doing great. So just uh, wait. Where you, okay. when, when, did, when did you get into Flat Earth? Uh, I got in 2014 towards the end of it sometime. Oh, all right. All right. So cool. You, I, you've been in it for a while. Yeah. We had a family family reunion, and I was wondering, like, should I mention to anybody or not? And I mentioned to, <laughs> Do you not and, remember and I mentioned, the, the first rule of Flat Club is that you do not talk about Flat Club? Well, well, that, that Flat Earth rule goes outside the window, I guess. Well, because I mentioned it, and my cousin said, like, oh, you're, you're kind of crazy, right? Yeah. And we had a family reunion about like uh, three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, yeah. And we were going around and pointing out who believes in flat Earth. We had only one guy who doesn't believe in flat Earth. Nice, that's awesome. <laughs> that's really yeah. It's it's spreading so fast. And and when when you had that family yeah, reunion, th- was that before or after? That was after the Kyrie thing happened, but before the Shaq uh, thing happened. Yeah, but most of my family are Russians. They don't watch Shaq or Kyrie. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't have anything to do with that. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's 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 spreading. It's spreading. I I don't want to say it like a virus, but it really kind of is because it infects people. Once you get into it, you you it consumes you. You don't know what to you know what else to even look at. People just spend all their time just. I hear the same story, which is they just keep watching more and more and more videos, and then they get inspired to make their own videos, which which perpetuates it even more. To where now, if you're brand new into flat Earth, I can't even imagine the the first impression you might get because you get this wall of content, and so many and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views on on all the big ones, and people are just it's like, well, how did I miss this? How long has this been going on? And you find out it's been going on for you know pushing two plus years. Oh, it's amazing. So good for you though that you could bring it up. I, I have another. I, I have another story that we had. We yeah. were watching the fights like on on Saturdays, like yeah. UFC fights, and we had one friend that didn't show up yet, but he's an atheist. He's into the scientist world. Yeah, and and everybody else in that room was a flat earther, and we were talking about Joe Rogan having the news of Grant Tyson. Yeah, so we were just we were just mocking it. Then he shows up the next couple of hours later, and he was like, "Did you guys watch the Joe Rogan show? He had Neil deGrasse Tyson." And we're like, "What do you think about it?" He's like, "Oh, it was pretty good, pretty good." And we're like, "Oh, okay." And he's like. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson has this eight series of cosmos where he goes from the universe into the cell. He talks about it, and we're like, did you watch it? He's like, yeah, yeah. So we go outside, and I'm like, can you point out a North Star for me? And he's like, uh, uh. I'm like, it's, well, okay, I'll, I'll help you out with it. Can you point out a Big Dipper for me? 
And he's like, oh, I think it's over there. And he points out at Orion. I'm like, you watch eight series of Neil deGrasse Tyson and you don't even know where Big, Big Zipper's at? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's amazing like they, they, yeah, how much we've, we've lost. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah they, they, they believe this stuff, but they don't even know what they're believing in. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it's funny because I will mention to people now when they say, you know, if I say, take NASA out of the equation. How do you know it's a globe? And people will say, well, it's science. Science told us. And then I will come back and say, okay, what exactly – do you remember about science? You know, what science test do you remember? And, and people just fumble. They don't know what to do. They, they say, well, the ship's going over the horizon. I go, science never did a test on that. Not once. Mm-hmm. The, uh, you know, they say, oh, the curvature of the moon. I go, does that prove that, that it's a globe? You know, the, and, and they'll, they'll rattle off a few things, but they don't have any dates. They don't have any names. And finally, I come back and say, no, you believe in the globe because it was in your classroom. That's the only reason you believe it. It was sitting there when, since you were six years old and you, you never thought any different. You never questioned it. Why would you question it? And the older you got, the harder it would be to question anyway. So, yeah, yeah it's fascinating. Good stuff though, man. Any, uh, any shout outs you want to give? Uh, not really. <laughs> no? My kids, I guess. I can give a shout out to the kids if, they, if uh, I'll let them replay on YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> no, you could. E- Eva and Anthony. But they're they're both little, but they're flat earth, so definitely right on, man. We're home, we're homeschooling them, so they're not. Going that's awesome. To... That's awesome. That's 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 great stuff. And again, I've I, 2017. If, if it's go, it sure feels like a critical mass year to me. And you know, we're barely finishing up March here, so it's that's fantastic. Okay. All right, man. Well, hey, you have a, a good rest of your evening. Okay. All right. Oh, well, I'm driving. I'm going to be going to sleep pretty soon. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you, man. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for taking the call. All right. Bye-bye. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That phone number is 720-897-6111. And we were just going through Flat Earth News. I was just typing in Flat Earth and setting the filter to this week. Joe Rogan's there. Uh, Devin Maggie, The Truth is Stranger in Fiction. <laughs> NASA channel, Matt Boylan came out with another video called Flat Earth School's Shack, Math Flattens Shack. Uh, no ego involved there. Beyond the Imaginary Curve, still cranking out stuff. Flat Earth Street interviews, love what he's doing. Celebrate Truth. Uh, uh, Robbie read, read a neat article on what do flat earthers believe on social media. The Infinite Plain Society, Antarctic Warrior, Globusters, all the usual suspects are on here. There's another Joe Rogan University fan channel. That's 100,000 views. 360 area codes calling in. That's close by. Let's see what they want. 360 area code. Where are you calling from? I'm guessing it's Washington State. Hi, Mark. Yeah, it's Black Fred from Longview. How are you tonight? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good, I think. Yeah, I wanted to uh, first off apologize for misspelling conscious and unconscious in my email <laughs> and, uh, on your last show. That that's okay, man. I've done worse. I was reading an article and I was getting confused between perpetrate and perpetuate because I think the guy used it wrong in the, in the article. So don't no don't worry. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not a. I'm not a grammar Nazi. Not despite well, what I what I may put in. No, it's totally okay. I I felt bad that I actually misspelled misspelled it because I'm usually better than that. I, and you know what? It's, <laughs> it's totally all right. It's all right. Any what what else you got? But, uh, I wanted to say thank you again for waving my butt, and uh, you get a chance help Pat. Uh, you got two tests, and also I've got four of them, so I, I know what she goes through with those. Um, and I, I think the Flat Earth community should, if they're subscribed to Eric, unsubscribe from him, because he's just making himself out to be something that he's really not. I know. He, I know. He's the king. And it's everyone. The only difference between any presenter is the way they present the information. Yep. Yep. That's and, the, and the only difference. 
I'm sorry, you still there? Yeah, I, I said and what? You said and and. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it, I, I feel bad because some people are saying, "Well, you know, there's Eric's camp and then there's Mark's camp or whatever." It's like, no, 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 no. no. You, you're you're missing the point here. Eric has no real camp. He's just it's it's him versus everybody. That's you know I, I initially he just had his his enemies list which has got only fourteen people and he made that enemies list back in twenty fifteen, but now after he did that thing with Eddie Bravo it's become very clear that it's just him that's that's the only person he endorses he endorses nobody else and I would have thought geez he, he just did a hangout with Dell from Scotland thought he would have given a shout out to Dell he was just on that on that channel. He didn't, or or give a shout out to the people that helped stream his video. He didn't even promote his own video. He didn't run a promo for the Eddie Bravo thing. He didn't <clears throat> run a thing on Ifers. Uh, it was uh, it drove, it drove me nuts. Like I, I'll, all I can say is, look, I've, I've been, I've been, the Olive Branch has been out on my side for two years, and I'm done. I'm, I'm done with it. He can, he can do what he wants, but I'm not going to reference him anymore. Anyway, you got any, uh, any shout-outs you want to give before we go to another color? Yeah, shout-out to everybody in the community. Uh, they're all doing a heck of a job. And cool. uh, tell, tell uh, Patricia, I think she's a pretty cute young thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you would not be alone. There's quite a few people that think that, yes. <laughs> Got one contact in it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hey, it, it was nice to talk to you. You have a good one, okay? You do. All right. And, uh, okay. Talk He's to you soon. Real... All right. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720 720-897-6111. And what was the other thing I was going to mention? Oh, yeah, there was a video, and I, I can't remember who to thank for this, but there was a pilot who took up the challenge. You know, up until now, I, I put the challenge out there, and I've said, anyone who wants to take a picture, if they think they see the curve, take a picture, send it to me. And a pilot sent one, and it was deciphered before it was even sent to me. 913 area code. You are on live with Strange World. Who are you? Where are you from? Is this your first time? Hey, Mark. This is Joseph from Iowa. Hey, what's going on? Oh, not much. Um, I was just calling in because I uh, sort of mentioned something about a couple of videos I saw recently. Uh huh. Um, have you heard of that Potter's Clay? Yeah. Okay. Have you seen his videos on... Uh, he recently did... There was three that just popped out of me, but with ODD's videos would tip me off to it about the Mars... The Mars stuff, but... Uh, I'm, scan- I'm scanning days. through right now to see if I can find exactly what they're titled. And uh, I found my here. Here it is. It's uh, proof th- uh, thrust is not is not possible in the vacuum, and then proof combustion is also not possible in a vacuum. Those are the two main ones. Nice. But they're featured in. Uh, I don't know if you've seen ODD's uh, Red Planet Deception. Okay, I think it's like it's two days ago or, so, or one day ago. Oh, cool. But, uh, yeah, very cool. I just, I kind of really solidified a few things. I mean, just showing that experiment, I'd seen one before, but, uh, man, that one was, I mean, just, you know, just thinking about everything, about uh, how, you know, just kind of hits you when you're, you know, telling us we've been going to space for this long. And then, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's... <laughs> and then you just, and you see this vacuum, just an experiment, anybody can set this up themselves and, it's just like, yeah, he, he had a, what is it, the, you know, the rocket uh, igniter for one of those toy rockets. He yep. Had like, uh, I think it was acet- acetone something, and it was uh, just highly flammable and just didn't do a thing to it. And you're just like, the whole time, you're just like, okay. <laughs> yep. You know, oh, no. I mean, it's, how, how, it's, does not, how does that not hit you? <laughs> yeah, the argument, and it's, it, it's something that really kind of missed most of the community for at least the first year, which was, Everything, it's, you know, everything has an equal and opposite reaction. So we have to push off something. <clears throat> when you're running, yeah. you're, you're pushing against the ground. When you're swimming, your feet and your arms are pushing against the water. When you're in an airplane, the propeller or in a jet, a very fast propeller, is pushing against the air because the air is just a, a thin version of water. But in the vacuum yeah. of space, there's nothing to push off of. And I mean nothing. 
So nope. how the heck are you getting momentum? I mean, you can say, yeah, once you once you you can get initial momentum supposedly if you're pushing off a a body, but once you're there, how do you do it? It's it's interesting, yeah. and you know, and yeah. how do you how do you break? How do you do any of this? <laughs> how stuff? do you get? How do you get back? <laughs> yeah, how do you get back? How where, what maneuvering <laughs> thrusters? And yeah. it's it's something that they don't talk about because you can't do the test down here. So I mean, you can do some tests, but you can't do. Well, let's put it this way: you nowadays you could create a vacuum chamber big enough to to try to simulate some of this, but. I think it wouldn't give you the results that, that that people would expect. I mean, we believe again. We believe science. They they yeah. you know why is the sky blue? Why is this that? And and we <laughs> we take it for granted. The the core of the Earth thing. Even though you know, I, I'm going to bring that up till till the day I die, which is the the core of the Earth. I, and I didn't even notice it until recently that all the bands of the core. You know, when you're looking at the co- the cross section, they're all perfectly right. equal bands. You know, it's like each yeah. one of them is like an inch thick, as yeah. if, because you know this. How how do you know this exactly? That it's the you know, yeah. and and that at the, that at the center it's spinning and all this. You if your probes, you've only drilled down uh, eight miles. So yeah. Anyway. Oh yeah, I, and and, and uh, just one more real quick on uh, Potter's clay. He has one more called "Satellites Do Not Exist uh, Flat Earth," which he pointed out a really interesting point that. The only only things that can exist in geostationary orbit supposedly have to be above the equator at what like twenty two thousand two hundred thirty six miles or something like that. Yeah. But yet the visuals he shows in that video, you know, show satellites just totally encompassing the ball. Oh yeah, yeah, like thousands. all around, like a swarm when of it bees. Says, yeah. It, yeah, and it says on Wikipedia, like it says, geostationary orbit can only exist above the equator at like twenty two thousand, I think two hundred thirty six miles. I'm like. What is this? You know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, or anyway. or you know the the part which I love is if you're flying through space, like again, like the mission to Mars. We'll, we'll just use the Orion project for the heck of it. Once you leave, you know, once you go past the moon, if the whole solar system is flying like a big sideways frisbee through space, yeah. how how in the world is that probe or how is that craft not being left in the dust? How is the solar system not pulling away from it? You say, "Oh no, it's yeah. gravity." The gravity of the solar system is going to pull it along. It's like no, because <laughs> there's there's going to be some massive null points between between the planets. You're gonna you're gonna it'd be like dropping a piece of paper out the window of your car. It's going backwards. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, even with the momentum yeah. or a ball for that. You know, a, a ball would be better than a piece of paper because it wouldn't catch the wind. But if you drop a ball yeah. out the window, uh, like a cue ball. And you know, how eventually that ball, that thing is going to lose momentum. And the peanut gallery just chimed in, like, how do comets, you know, like like Halley's comet that comes back oh, yeah. every seventy six years, how is <laughs> that, that coming no back? Sense. How is the comet? Really, how is the comet catching back up with the sun? How is it going uh, no. faster than our entire solar system? How is that happening? Uh, uh anyway, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Any uh, any anything else? Any shout outs? Nah, nothing really going on. Just uh just listening in. Oh cool. Another Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, another Tuesday. And uh, I mean big big flat earth month so far. The last thirty days have been nutty. Uh, I mean the yeah. I, I had a hard oh, time. I'm oh. kinda glad it's it's a slower week because I was I was burning out. I was there were so many media things I was having to look at and chop up and edit and put out there. That uh, yeah, but but at the same time, the publicity was fantastic. So it was it was it was great. Even with Shaq retracting, that was great. Oh gosh, it's, yeah. Uh, sorry, one last thing. Um, yeah, totally. This totally just threw a, a, a I guess you call it wrench into my spokes. I guess on the whole flat Earth. But yeah. listen to the Infinite Point Society. Or, yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Have you listened to him at all? I've I have heard. Yeah, he's gone on some long hangouts. Yep, I have heard him. Yeah, I just. I don't know, man. He's going somewhere where I haven't heard anybody go before with the whole Rome thing. So yeah. that's just kind of just nuts. I mean, I can't even wrap around it yet. Yeah, I, it's again, interesting. I'm looking at it, but I don't know. I love that 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 the inspiration that cra- that flat Earth creates just there is no limit to it. It, it goes yeah. everywhere, and it's yeah, going. It's, it's just uh, yeah. you think you find the edge or whatever, and it's yeah. just not there. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. 
Um, right. Oh crap! We gotta go. To, we gotta go to break here. Uh, oh, any any right. shout outs you want to give before we go to break? Uh, just uh, shout out to Ames, Iowa. That's where we're at, I guess. Go Cyclones. Cool. Cool. Right on, man. Well, hey, right. uh, maybe, maybe we'll talk to you next week. Sounds good, man. All right. We'll see you. See later. All right. Uh, last chance for you guys to call in is next segment, and that phone number is 720-897-6111. That phone number is 720-897-6111. No hate, no hype, no fear. Real people, real radio. Welcome back to Strange World. I'm Mark Sargent. This is part four of four, your last chance to call in. Yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album Night and Day. And before we bring the caller who called in during the break, I'd just like to mention that tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, I am going to be with Patricia Steer show on her channel Go to YouTube. It is called Flat Earth Hot Potatoes. And 510 is calling in, but I've got a call on the line right now. So where are you calling from? Is this your first time? What are we talking about? Hey, Mark. Uh, yeah, this is Steve from West Virginia. This is my first time calling in. Right on. Hey, I've been uh, following yourself for some time now. I know it must have been six months or a year. I don't know. Uh, but one thing I've never heard you discuss, I'm curious about, is if you have any kind of an explanation for how the so-called pendulum does its thing. I, you know, I usually defer the so-called pendulum to other people because there's there's two schools of thought. One is that you can never have an objective so-called pendulum because the the pendulum itself is attached to the earth and the only way you could get an objective one is if it was suspended on its own which we which is impossible to do unless of course you had like a helicopter and even then I don't think that would be probably be reliable but for me the other one is that I don't really disagree with any of the physics that are happening underneath the uh, the surface meaning because some people have said, well, if it's a flat world, how do things work? Like, for example, you know, is there a magnetic north? Yeah, yeah, of course there's a magnetic north. It's, it's at the North Pole, and that's the only magnetic there is. There's no magnetic south. But when it comes to the full cult pendulum, even if you, if, you, if you leaned on it, it's not – first of all, most people aren't going to use that as the silver bullet against the flat earth anyway because it confuses a lot of people. Your average person – It's not an argument again, Tenning. I'm just trying to – Oh, no, no. I got you. Get around you. that. The, yeah. If, if, there is a, if there is an artificial magnetic force that's underneath us right now, uh, no, no different. I mean, remember that gravity is also going to be an artificial magnetic force, you know, although mo- on a molecular level. Then uh, simulating a folk called pendulum, uh, not that hard to do. Can remember the uh, – in fact, the peanut gallery is saying, here's a thought. The pendulum is always metal, isn't it? I don't know where he's going with that yet. But – Remember that, that whoever built this place wanted to simulate a globe. So if there was some sort of variation in the magnetic field underneath us that helped the, the folk called pendulum go along, then why not? I mean, you know, it's it's it helps it helps with the illusion. Kind of no different than the stars rotating in other directions. And I know some people disagree on that and say, well, no, the stars aren't really rotating in different directions, but. I, I've seen some time lapse at the equator. It seems fairly convincing, but it, you know, multiple projection systems. How hard would it be? 
we're talking about technology that's way beyond ours. So, sorry, that's my long version. of The Foucault pendulum, whatever forces are working on the Foucault pendulum, no, you know, just a slight variation of uh, a gravity well that's being used. You know, we, we, we've been able to simulate gravity wells that can spin clockwise or counterclockwise and do just about anything you want. So doing something that, that someone could pick up, pick up on an experiment like the Foucault pendulum, not that hard in my opinion. So, but I, I understand why it's not talked about a lot because honestly, the, the, the very experiment itself confuses the average person on the street. They don't know what to well, do. Yeah, I, I came across some mention somewhere of uh, that actually the so-called pendulum behaves weird around the time of eclipses. Right. And right. I don't know if there's anything to that or not. Uh, uh, but, you know. I mean, let, let's put it this way. Uh, here's an interesting... You want, you want to go down the so-called pendulum path, I would counter that with... The people that are at the equator, at the tourist sites, that will show uh, – uh, so not 100 percent. Hang on. I'm, I'm reading the, the, the peanut gallery. Let's read this real quick. Air resistance damps the oscillations, so some fall cult pendulums in museums incorporate an electromagnetic or other drive to keep it swinging. Others are restarted regularly, sometimes with a launching ceremony as an added attraction. Yeah, and that's from Wiki, so not 100%. But it's interesting because the you'll see tourist places at the equator that will show you water moving dr- down drains in separate dr- in opposite directions, right? You know, they'll they'll move it 10 feet at the exact equator point. And they'll show water going in opposite directions, and then I'll say, okay, I've got a mass. There's a massive YouTube channel out there called Smarter Every Day that did simultaneous tests, one in Australia, one in the United States, with a huge, you know, big kids wading pool with a central drain, very elaborate test, done at the exact same time with dye in the water that was left still for hours to make sure there was absolutely nothing happening with it. And the, 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 the spin was so gradual, it was almost undetectable. Almost undetectable. So he was going. Well, you, he, so even he said, like whatever you you hear about toilets flushing in the wrong directions or sinks and all this. He goes, it's a myth. He goes, it's just yeah. it's it's just how the drains are designed. It's it's just something we tell people. So I and I've still yet to find a scientist that'll throw the focal pendulum at me. And I think it's because they they understand that the average person. Heck, I was surprised when I bring up eight inches per mile squared to people. How people will glaze over as soon as you say that. It's like, wow, are people that, af- that afraid of math? You know, it's it's just, seriously. You say eight inches per mile squared, people just panic. They go back to their their high school days. It's like, oh man, I do not know algebra. It's like, dude, it's not that hard. You know, it's 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 about as basic as it gets. But it freaks people out. So the phone call, pff, I don't. I generally don't sweat it. I, I've done what 110 interviews now. Nobody's brought it up to me. So, but thank you for bringing it. Well, up. I just did. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks, man. That's all. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's okay, but it's not. It's let's, it'll never kill flat Earth. If yeah, no. Uh, well, I mean, I, I'm I'm just looking to understand the whole picture, you know. Yeah. 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 yeah full cult. Yeah. It, it's not one of my. It's not one of my favorite points. People like the the big flashy visual stuff. Full cult is, is like. Eh, I mean, it takes takes hours before you see the damn thing do anything. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but more, more, you know the you know what I should counter the folk cult with? I I show them the, that time lapse gyro stuff, where you have a stationary gyro that's spun up with an artificial power source tied to it, and mm-hmm. let it go, and it should be moving with the the spin of the Earth, and it's not, and you let the suckers go for hours and hours, and never happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, check those yeah. out if you get a chance. In fact, I got to remember that one because there's so yeah, much. Fun. I, I, Anyway. Uh, I, may, I I used to work for uh, NASA guidance and navigation. Uh, I also did computer program, programming for them way back when oh. on the Apollo project. And uh, the whole thing about gyros is what uh, throws me off because, you know, like uh, if these gyros, if, if the Earth were not flat, yeah, uh, then gyros would be going long mumpers on then everything. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, they'd be, they'd be going all over the place, you know, as you go around this supposed big ball. Yep. 
Yep. And, yep. and it don't, don't happen. Nope. Doesn't. Absolutely doesn't. Um, by the way, if you want to look up, there's a neat link thing called on sciencenetlinks.com, student teacher sheets, folk cult pendulums, answer key. You can look this up huh. online if you want. Anyway, I don't think it's a silver bullet. Let's move on to something else. Do you, is there anything else you want to bring up? Oh, I think I was listening to uh, someone who might be qualified or interesting to have a debate with. Uh, Linda Morton Howe came out against Flat Earth Today. Came out against? Yes. Wow, that's surprising. Uh, it was on the interview, I think it was in Britain with some guy named Michael. Huh. Uh, I just, what did she say? It's re- a distraction? Uh, no, she just you know, sort of made fun of it and burst it off. Hmm. And she and I've actually used one of her quotes because she was one of the few people that mentioned how crop circles, nobody gives it any credence because the myth was passed on since the 90s when those two British guys came out and says, oh, no, we're doing all the crop circles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even though some of these things were happening simultaneously in different countries and, uh, you know, not to mention the, uh, the my, my favorite, which is the Russian crop writing, which was done in Krasnodar. K R A Z N O D O R, and but the point was she was going. That was one of the most effective pieces of dis- disinformation of all time, which is when you, nobody even paid attention to crop circles after that because they staged this thing where these two British guys came out and and said that they did it, and most people don't remember. I was one of the few people that read it in the news back then, where the a British newspaper offered a cash reward to anybody that could prove they could do co- crop circles. And do you know how much they were offering, by the way? 50,000 no. 50, pounds. That's about, 70, wow. that's about 75 grand in U.S. money, and that's in the early 90s. That's a chunk of change. Uh, I'd like to see him do the sh- Shradaturian one. Ah, there you go. There you go. Anyway, I, the, yeah, I hope may, – well, maybe I'll, t- well, I'll get a chance to talk to Linda. Maybe I won't down the road. But, yeah, you never know. At least she's looking at it. Yeah. So, well, so. at least uh, – at least this guy, Michael, brought it up on the air for her. And, you know, like she's poo-pooed and brushed it aside. It's not – it doesn't – everybody everybody makes fun of it right away. You know, nobody – Oh, 510, uh, I will pick you up, I swear. I will. Th- you'll be my, my next caller as soon as I hang up with this guy. So, All right, go for it, Mark. Uh, well, I'll, pick up and, I'll pick it up and say, any shout-outs you want to give? No, no, don't know anybody who'll be listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hey, you have a good rest of your night, okay? Yeah, you too. Okay, bye. bye-bye. All right, last chance to call in. Anyone that wants to call in, that's 720897 Six one one one. That is seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one. And five one zero area code. I know you've tried at least three times tonight. I I swear I have not been dodging it. Your timing just sucks. And there he is, as if by magic. Five one zero area code. Where you, where are you calling from? This is your first time. What are we talking about? Hey Mark, how you doing, man? This is uh, Latanya once again out of uh, Pittsburgh, California. Right on. What uh, what's happening? Oh, man, too much of nothing. Just got to uh, finishing up my last route. Uh, anytime I can uh, get off on a uh, Tuesday at a respectable time is always a good thing. Cool. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. What's uh, any, Anything on your mind this week? Yeah, just a couple of uh, quick comments. Uh, the first one was uh, I appreciate you uh, giving your reasons why you lean more towards a, 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 a closed creation versus uh, the infinite plane. Yeah, uh, it was one that I had been chewing on for quite some time, and uh, you basically touched on the things that uh, I was uh, sharing with uh, Mark in New York with about how, you know, I was my my whole premise was if it's an infinite plane, then why would it be a cap, you know, from in regards of the whole space aspect? Yep, and that was one of the things I was trying to chew on, and not and not to even say that it couldn't be extra land. Oh yeah, yeah, other, yeah. I'm I'm not saying know, that I, yeah. Absolutely right. I'm not saying that there isn't any more land outside of this. I'm just saying that we can't get out. That's the, that, that's the catch. It's like there may yeah, be extra land. Not. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And obviously, you know, I don't I don't mind saying that. Yeah, obviously, I became a believer in the close creation due to scriptures. But at the same time, I want to look at it from a uh, 
from a from a from a technical standpoint, you know. Right. And uh it's 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 one of the things that my past always shares with us is, you know, first seeing things and actually we did from a spiritual aspect. And you know, it makes a whole lot of sense. And uh my next comment was, you know, just to go down the the uh the whole pinata of the Eric thing, uh as I was explaining to uh, my friend Mark, I was like, you know, everybody knows you know, that, that kid back in the day on the block who, you know, was one of the kids who was kind of hard to play with, you know. Yep. Uh, he had pretty much all the new things that came out, you know, and everybody knew he was kind of had a curve. Not to say that anybody else didn't have it, but he was just one of those ones who happened, happened to have it first. Yep. And it just got to a point where we just get tired of him want to make up all the rules you know, yeah. tell us how the game should be played and so on and so forth. And then we just, everybody on the block like, you know what? We had enough. And yeah. uh, we'll go, and, and if we got a band together to create, you know, some, to be able to go and get some of these cool things, well, hey, let's just go ahead and do it. So, yeah, that's the way I view that. And, uh, yeah, it, 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 like you said, there's really no need to give any more uh, 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 momentum to it than what it has already been given. And, Hey, you know, if somewhere down the line he chooses to change his, his 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 way of thinking, that would be cool. I mean, you know, as we know, your age doesn't identify, you know, your man or your woman, your womanhood, but it's the way you carry yourself and the thing in 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 the way you articulate yourself or how you deal with others. So good points, that, so. excellent points, no, all of them, man. Yeah, most well, definitely. again, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Most deaf, most deaf, and uh, yeah, it is what it is, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be. One question I do have, I guess it's a question. Yeah, I do have a question. Yeah, so, sure. From a, so I need to understand. So is so is space also quote unquote supposed to be a pressurized system as well too? Well, no, no, no. There doesn't there doesn't okay. have to be space once you get to a certain altitude. Meaning okay. it, the the grit the vast distances of space that's all simulated. Now, yeah, you can go up no different than what we're what we're doing now when when we're building at least artificial worlds, which is you can go up to a hurt certain level. I mean, if you if 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 the cap of this thing where we are is a thousand miles, two thousand miles, three thousand miles, that's still quite a ways. But if ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people don't ever have to go up that far, then you don't build out any further than that. Because okay, oh no no oh no oh no I'm all good with that. I was talking about from the from from the from the uh from the from the, the globalist standpoint. Uh uh I'm for a state construct. Uh, oh, oh is, is space is space pressurized? Yeah. No, they don't no okay. they they mainstream science says that space is an absolute vacuum, which okay. which causes a lot of problems, it physics wise. They yeah. they as you know, the rocket stuff, that's that's one thing, the atmosphere that's another thing. Uh, how how heat is conducted, how radiation is is transferred, how electromagnetic energy is transferred. It's it's problematic. Not to mention the the vast distances. The the Carl Sagan wow. quote, which I really loved, which he said that it seems like an awful waste of space. No play on words there. You know, there's there's huge distances where there's nothing there. So. Right. Eh. Right. And I also find out what's pretty interesting when the last gentleman, a couple of people made the comment about, you know, how all these supposed to be satellites. But another thing that's interesting with the blue marble shot and all these pictures, it's amazing that you don't have too many of where they show the satellites. Oh, you know, yeah. You get more pictures. And I, I mean, so it's like you can't have one without the other. You got yeah, yeah. The where, where are the... Where are the time lapse footage shots of the little flashes of silver as the satellites pass right. in front of the sun? Right. And, right. And, or the fact that the, the first blue marble shot was in 1972, the second blue marble shot was in 2015. But you know the shot that I, I really – people got to look at this more and more. You want to look at some interesting stuff. Look at the black marble shots, which is okay. the, supposedly the nighttime shots released by NASA. And look at – Australia. There was a video made by someone fairly recently. I didn't discover this where he's going he, because it shows all the cities lit up, right? And the cities all over the world lit up in these black marble shots. The earth at night, basically. And he goes, you know, so it's really strange. He goes, you look at it at Australia and the, the western part of Australia is lit up. I mean, there's huge population centers there. The only problem is nobody lives in the freaking western part of Australia. It's a coastal population. Everybody lives on the beach. No, It's a desert on the inside. Nobody lives there. And they somebody got lazy at NASA and drew in all these nighttime cities on the western part of Australia. 
And when he they won. were he won. <laughs> the, the, on the black marble shot, and when they when you look when you ask NASCA, uh, they say, "Oh, there were brush fires that summer." It's like really yeah. brush fires that covered thousands of square miles, and they look How exactly convenient. like cities. Come on. How convenient. How convenient. Ugh. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can go on and on and yeah, on. But, uh, yeah. yeah, that was pretty much all I had. Oh, yeah, one of the ones I've been using with people is because, you know, I, what I'm learning is, uh, like one other gentleman said, a lot of people really don't know, you know, the actual construct and what it's involved in play. And, like, for instance, for instance when you got the standing and then going around the, the sun, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. We, we, we tend to separate things. you got to put all those things together. But, but just using a simple thing, I asked a person, go on YouTube or look up anything and show me a shot that you can show where it's the ISS or any, you know, NASA footage where they show a piece of land mass. I don't care if it's a water, I don't care if it's a boat, because it's all about the money shot, you yep. know. Let's zoom in on something underneath, you know, showing yep. it, sticking. Why yep. we don't have that shot? Type of stuff to make you go home. Hmm. So, yep, absolutely, man. That's, yeah, so that's my rant, uh, and uh, okay. uh, hopefully I can call in again. Definitely looking forward to the conference, man. Uh, my mom, I'm looking forward to her uh, coming out. I actually wish she accompanied me. She said she would more than uh, love to be able right to on, man. Me. It's going to be a great yeah. event. I it's oh uh, yes, 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 and uh, and yes, and just to be able to see people shake a hand, you know, to actually physically touch it, and like you said, it is it's a momentum rush, and it will only you know, give that much more of uh, cert- certified, you know, conviction that we are on the right path. And yeah, man, this thing is definitely bigger than, than, than what people want to give it. Right on, man. Excellent. Oh, definitely. It's been a pleasure. Good stuff. Hey, you right. have a good rest of your night and uh, we'll talk to you Thank soon. You. Okay. All right. You do the same. Have a good one. Take care. All right. See ya. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right. Plenty of great calls tonight. Thank you guys for, for for all different people that called in. We'll take one more. We got five minutes to the end of the show, so it'll be a short one. 720-897, and sure enough, as if by magic, here's one from 303 Area Code. 303 Area Code, you're probably in Colorado. You're going to be the last call of the night. Who are you? This is Tony from Denver. Tony. What's going on? Oh, sorry, three one four. Gonna gonna miss you tonight. We, we uh, I'm gonna take this call unless unless he's Tony's really short, but we'll see. What's going on, Tony? Quick. What do you got? Um. Well, I wanted to thank you. That was uh, my mom that called you earlier. Um, first time caller. Oh, cool. Yeah, you, know, you were really nice to her, and I've called before and told you that you are my mom's favorite. <laughs> nice, man. I tried to get her to listen to Jaronism, and she didn't like him too much. Uh, Jaron's got uh, look. Uh, the the great thing about the community is there's something for everybody. So yep. Uh, yep. if you want like really angry rants, you could listen to um, you know Eric Debate. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't even going to say him. I was going to say Jake from from <laughs> FEA, but yeah, that's fine. So, oh, that's helpful. cool. That's I, I'm I'm really um, I, I'm trying to be nice to everybody. I don't. I don't necessarily, you know, I can't judge anybody and, and, you know, but in fact, I'm going to take on April Fool's night, I'm going to take some hostile calls on Dark 30 Radio. And I can't, I can't get mad at these people because I was one of these people. So, yeah. and so I, I just well, try to be nice. She still is one of those people and she said she'd call you again and uh, she That's was cool. uh, happy with uh, calling. And anyway, we went good and she want to call again. Cool. Um, I had a, qu- a question for you yeah. besides just talking about my mom. Yeah, sure. We got. Um, I've been wanting to ask you about Trump's inaugural address, where he was talking about unlocking the mysteries of space. Yeah. What mysteries are there to unlock besides it's a hoax? Oh, exactly. Or if you want to go down the Neil Armstrong line when he was at that convention with Clinton before he died, where he said that there's so much left to do if we can unlock one of or unveil unveil one of truth lift one of truth's hidden protective layers. What, whatever cryptic message that was from the first guy that was on the moon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Trump's and, and plus Trump signed in, uh, signed a bill that that kind of went past everybody's radar where NASA, they approved a special bill that NASA gets their money no matter who's in power. So it doesn't come down to the president anymore. NASA is guaranteed their money now. No matter their, their budget is almost like universally approved every year from this point going forward. It's like, really? We'll see how we'll see if we can stop that. So, yeah. 
Well, one of the mysteries I think about with space is what's on the other side of the dome. Yeah, that that is the big question. What's out there? Uh, I'd like to think it's an unlimited dimension or a, a, a world that's far more uh, open ended than this one. This one seems to be built on on unlimited conflict. So you got about sixty seconds left, and I got to wrap up the show. Any any little any shout outs you want to do? Any points you want to make real quick? Yeah, how come you never bash Richard Bronson and Virgin Galactic? You always forget about them and only focus on uh, SpaceX. On SpaceX. Are they not going to space anymore? Yeah, Virgin Galactic is kind of they're, – they're a distant project now. They, I used to, to go after them back in the day, you know, back in the day, what, last year. But not anymore. <laughs> they, they haven't been doing much. So I don't know what's going yeah. on with Virgin Galactic. Uh, SpaceX seems to be – the the forefront. I mean, heck, they say they're going to take two people around the moon and back next year. Can't wait to see what happens there. So, yeah, I'm I'm not worried about Virgin Galactic right now. I mean, who knows if they? He just doesn't seem to have his have his have have his heart in it anymore. But we'll mm-hmm. see. any well, I, I great got show a, tonight. I, I'm sorry. What? Great show. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, I, maybe we'll talk soon. Mm-hmm. All right. Have a good one. Good night. Bye bye. All right, guys, that is the end of the calls, and we are coming up on the end of the show. Peanut Gallery wants me to sing Joe Jackson. Not going to happen. I, I Look, I don't have the range to, to sing Joe Jackson stepping out. That is that is not my my vocal range. It's not going to happen. 314 area code. I know you were trying to get in. Sorry, there's just no time left. Ten Commandments. I still don't have memorized, but what I try to tell people is treat others better than you treat yourself. If you do that, the world will be a better place. Tomorrow afternoon, don't forget, the uh, 3 o'clock p.m., 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific, I'm going to be on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes with Patricia Steer. And don't forget to check out the conference, which is at uh, fe2017.com. Book your hotel rooms early because I think the next closest hotel is like three miles away. Going to be a lot of fun. It's in November. You're not going to get billed for the hotel until November. So you can book – you can reserve your rooms now if you're going. And I, but it's going to be so fantastic. Talk about flat earth, critical mass. Can't wait to see uh, you know, the, the unknowns that, that are going to happen there. I'm just so excited to be a part of it and, and glad they asked me to talk. So I'm going to be doing a luncheon thing on that – Uh, first deck. Anyway, guys, see you next week. Same flat time. Same flat channel. Yeah.